Welcome to another Last Hour Bereans, Last Days Update, where we discuss Bible prophecy, expose the wolves and false teachings that have crept into the church, declaring the soon return of the Lord, first for His church in the air, and then with His church at the end of the tribulation. Look up for our redemption. Welcome, everyone, to another LHB Last Days Update with Chris, Lewis, and Sam. And today, we're going to be starting a new series on angels. You know, what are they? What roles do they play in our lives? Why are mm-hmm. there two factions of angels out there? What happened to cause it? And all of this. Uh, this is just a piggyback on our, la- our last uh, series we did of what's in the sky. when We d- dealt with UFOs and aliens and so forth. But before we begin, why don't we all say hello to the LHB family? Sammy, go for it. Hi, guys. I hope you're all having a good day and that, (laughs) excuse me, you can learn um, a lot about angels and the proper context of what they actually are. Because I know in Christianity, there's a lot of misunderstandings about angels and their roles. So I pray that this video helps um, teach everyone who needs to learn. Amen. Louis. Uh, yeah, I'd like to welcome everyone back. And like Sam said, this is one of the most misunderstood uh, um, I know, topics in the Bible. It, it, it's about angels, and, and there's so much out there, uh, and 99.9% of it is not biblical. Amen. It's true. If you guys are new to our channel and like what you see in here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the no- notification bell. That way, every time we upload a video, you guys are notified. And like and share the video. Uh, we would appreciate that because that supports the channel. And uh, don't forget to leave your comments. We love when you guys comment. All right, so angels, right? So today we want, as an intro, we want to you know, go over some of the different types of angels out there uh, because there's a mindset that you know, there's only one uh, class of angels and they you know, all look the same and all of this, but it's not. All right? Um, so today we want to start with the different types of angels. Now, the first uh, batch of angels I want to dig into are the watchers. Now, you're like, what are the watchers? Well, these are the ones that record, right? Human history. They also relay messages from God to man kind of thing. And you find them in Daniel chapter 4, uh, verse 13. It says this, I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and an holy one came down from heaven. And you go to verse 17 of the uh, same uh, chapter. It says, this matter is by the decree of the watchers. So now we have plural watchers, right? And the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth it up over it the basis of men. Now, Again, this is talking about the watchers performing and relaying to man God's intentions and so forth. So, Sammy, what, what do you think about the watchers? Like, are they still watching us today? I mean, if they were watching human beings and recording our history down uh, back then, why would they have stopped? We're still here. Uh, so they're still watching and they're still writing things down. That's right. That's right. And, and Brother Lewis. I tell you what, um, you know, people may say, "Oh, but God knows everything. Why? Why would He have these angels write anything down? He He's all knowing, absolutely. But God is also just. And if you notice that in the Book of Revelation at the Great White Throne Judgment, the books will be open. Now, don't you think what those Watchers wrote down would be in those very books for our benefit? Uh, correct, and, and you're you're right. It, it, it's all for us. It's, it has nothing to do with God. Uh, God knows everything. Uh, I mean, he created everything. He not only sees the future, he has created the future where we're still in the present. So all of this that is written down is for our benefit. And, and, and if we read and, and, and we go to the word and, and knowing uh, that this is just a book specifically written for us, we know that it's for our benefit. It's, uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's for us to know. And yes, God doesn't need angels, okay? But he has angels. And um, if, if you have a problem with that or a question, well, um, one day in his presence, you may ask him. 
you won't you won't win that uh, argument by the way uh, <laughs> you know um angels are you know part of god's creation and they're created for a purpose right and you, it's like you said louis like you know god knows uh you know everything so it's like when you go back to the garden of eden when you know uh, God is looking for Adam and saying, Adam, where are you? You don't think God knew where he was? Of course he did. And yeah. then when he says, who hath told you you were naked? Don't you think he knew who told us? <laughs> it mm -hmm. was all for our benefit to see the human response to God. Instead of confessing to the Lord, he blamed his wife and the wife blamed the serpent and so forth and so on. And and, and basically Adam blamed God because he said the mm -hmm. woman gave me. So he was the first Calvinist. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, the next group, the next group, though, I, I mean, it's not really a group, okay? It's a singular entity here, and it's called the Archangel. Now, the reason I say it's only a singular being that's called the Archangel is because in Jude 1, verse 9, it says this, yet Michael, the Archangel, not one of the Archangels, but the Archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. Darest not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke thee. Now, Brother Louis, uh, we, we come from a Catholic uh, background, and you always see the uh, Archangel Michael in these paintings with the chicken wings on and the, the Roman dress, Roman skirt, you know, standing on the head of a dark-skinned devil most of the time, right, <laughs> with that wing, okay? Uh yeah. What do you think about that, man? Uh, uh, and, and most of the uh, Catholic paintings of uh, Michael or any angel is uh, very feminine to begin yes. with. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is an archangel, a warrior angel. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, like we, we talk about this, uh, Chris, you and I, it's, it's at the moment the highest ranking angel that we have in heaven. And it tells you the archangel. It doesn't mention archangels in any other part of the Bible, but specifically Michael. Um, and Michael is the one that contends with the, uh, with the, with the Satan later on in, you know, at the end times and Revelation mm -hmm. talks about him. And Michael is the defender of Israel. So if mm -hmm. you are to have a defender, this is the one angel you want. That's mm -hmm. right. I mean, Sammy, you know, uh, Michael is no joke in the scriptures. When you see uh, you know what he's about. He, he he's not like a little chubby cherub, you know, with a little harp and a bow and arrow like Cupid. He he's a terrifying being, isn't he? I mean, he yeah, he is a warrior. He in Revelation, John writes about the great battle in heaven between Michael and Satan, and he casts him down to earth, and he can no longer go to heaven to accuse us before the Father. Um, and yeah, he fought with the devil over Moses' body. He protects Israel. He is a warrior. He does not look how the Catholic Church depicts him or as a chubby little cherub. Right, right. I mean, he, he is, uh, if we were to see Michael in his true form today, we would probably either faint or die. Our hearts will probably just give out because yep. he, he's not, these are not little cute little, you know, little chubby things flying around our bedroom. Mm -hmm. Any hen says, you know, they used to visit him every night. <laughs> That's oh terrifying. God. I don't want little chubby stop things eating, flying around my bedroom. <laughs> it is terrifying. Stop eating that pizza. Yes. Bed, buddy. You know, um, all right. The next class uh, uh, of uh, angels are called the chief princes. Now, this is plural. There's more than one chief prince, right? Because it says in Daniel chapter 10, verse 13, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia, this was a fallen angel, by the way. Yes. withstood me this is gabriel talking okay one and 20 days or 21 days but lo mm -hmm. michael one of the chief princes came to help me and i remained there with the kings of persia so although michael is the archangel he is w only one of many chief princes right uh brother louis uh yes it is and and it's, it's beautiful the way daniel actually explains a lot about angels um and, and later on, you know, he talks about Gabriel. Gabriel is a messenger angel. Mm -hmm. Okay. But as Gabriel is finishing speaking to uh, Daniel, he tells him he's got to go back up uh, and continue the fight because they're still fighting. <clears throat> and this is, you know, when people say, I, I want to see into the spiritual world, they have no idea what they're talking about. They, we don't want to see 
the spiritual world. It's 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 not a what we would call a pretty sight. Uh, and, and and this is the reason why God keeps it from us. Um, later on, you know, in our glorified body, we'll be able to see everything, but we'll be able to handle everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we know there's a war out there between the uh, fallen angels and uh, those who chose to uh, remain at God's side. Right, right. You know, and uh, Sam, you know, a lot of people, uh, they believe that angels are no longer active in the Christian's life because we have mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. And if we have the Holy Spirit, we don't need angels. But doesn't that go back to God being all powerful? He, why did he create angels then? You know, he doesn't need angels, yeah. right? So the yeah. fact is, you know, angels have a purpose and they are the, you know, the watchers over the heirs of salvation. Mm -hmm. Okay. It says that in Hebrews, that's New Testament. Yep. So uh, don't you think that maybe one day in the future, we're going to, we're going to be able to realize how many times angels actually intervened in our lives here on earth now? I think we will. I think we'll, when we get to heaven or the rapture happens, uh, We'll be like, oh, like, you know, God sent his angels to protect me so many times. And I was totally clueless just going about my day. Um, we also know that angels are uh, sent to protect children in particular, um, along with uh, Christians. So, because um, God, you know, Jesus was like, let the little children come up. Come up I can't speak. Come unto me. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, Jesus was like, if anyone makes a little one not believe in me, it would be better if a millstone was put around his neck. So children and Christians are the most, and you know, they're very important to the Lord. Right. And he's going to send his angels to protect us. That's right. It says that the uh, faces of their the, the angels are always before the Lord when speaking of little babies and children. Mm -hmm. Because angels are given to the heirs of salvation. Mm -hmm. right? So little children, and that, by the way, that tells you little children do not go to hell because mm -hmm. they got the same protection as the heirs of salvation, you know, so that's very important. Now, we're going to talk about a, a powerful group of uh, angels here, um, and those are the seraphims or the burning ones, okay? And these uh, angels, they have six wings. They stand in the presence of the Lord. Uh, they are a different class all by themselves. And it says in Isaiah 6, verse 2, Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With two, he covered his face. And with two, he covered his feet. And with two, he did fly. Now, here's the thing. Uh, you know, we, we had this discussion off camera. A lot of people say, um, you know, angels have these chicken wings, right? Or angels don't have wings at all, and we we you know what, what what we're talking about is we let the scriptures say what it means. The scripture I just read said they had six wings. It didn't say six chicken wings or eagle wings or feathery wings. Yeah, it says six wings. So these are wings that are not native to this world. It's a heavenly type set of wings they have, and to with two of those wings. The seraphim were flying. So these are literal wings that they used mm -hmm. to fly. And um, Brother Lewis, is you know, you and I talk about this all the time. In movies, we see this. Matter of fact, Sammy brought up angels in the outfield and all of this. Mm -hmm. and isn't it all, all the time when you see them on the Hollywood screen, they have chicken wings, right? Yeah. Look, for, for an angel to have feathery wings means that God created a mutant. Uh, a mix of animal mm -hmm. and, and and spiritual being. This is a spiritual being. This is a powerful um, creation of God. And and to actually put, you know, bird feathers on him, um, it's it, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, and and this is what you see on TV, like you mentioned, uh, and, and Sam mentioned, uh, angels in the outfield. Every time you see an angel. Um, there was a movie, Gabriel, where this child, 12-year-old, uh, played Gabriel, and then he stands uh, on the altar <laughs> of a congregation, and, and you know, uh, to let people know who he is, there, there, there comes out the wings. And, and I hear a lot of Christians talk about that movie because it's a very beautiful movie, very sentimental, and this is what happens when you let your emotions dictate mm -hmm. what, uh, 
uh, what you're thinking opposite of what the, what the word of God says. There's no chicken wings, like you said. There's no w w animal wings. Uh, it says wings. Wings could be, I mean, airplanes have wings. And what are they made of? Yeah. Metal. Right. So mm -hmm. just take it for what the word says. They have wings. Amen. I mean, that, that, that keeps it simple. It, it, doesn't it? Like it, it lifts the burden of trying to, you know, figure everything out on your own. Just, no, God says what he means, means what he says. All right. So, Sammy, um, the next group are princes, principalities, powers, and rulers. And in, in Daniel chapter 10, verse 21, and then also in Jan Daniel chapter 12 and in Ephesians, it says, but I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things, but Michael, your prince. Okay, so he, Michael is one of these powers. He's one of these uh, mm -hmm. principalities, right? Because notice yeah. in the, the verse I read with Daniel, it says the prince of Persia came to fight Gabriel. Okay, who was a prince of heaven. So mm -hmm. do you think that we have these principalities and these powers fighting as we are speaking right now? Yeah, I think they're probably fighting all the time because there's always spiritual warfare going on behind the scenes. They're constantly, um, you know, fighting demons that are trying to probably have bad things happen or make things happen when they aren't supposed to yet. So it's constant spiritual warfare all the time right and we're talking real spiritual warfare not this made up word of faith charismatic stuff or right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> casting out demons out of furniture we're not talking about that um you know uh, brother lewis in daniel 12 speaking on princes and powers and all of that it says this and this, this is to your point by the way when you said that michael uh guards israel it says and at that time shall michael stand up the great prince, again, prince, he's one of the princes, which standeth for the children of thy people. Now, he's talking to Daniel. Daniel was a Jew, so we know who thy people is, the Jews. Mm -hmm. And there shall be a time of trouble. This is what Sam mentioned, the great tribulation. Okay, mm -hmm. and this is matching up. Daniel 12 actually matches up with Revelation 12. 12. The war in heaven, okay? Such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, time thy people shall be delivered everyone that shall be found written in the book the book of life now brother lewis that couldn't be more clear huh it doesn't daniel 12 match revelation 12 where michael cast satan out of the the first and second heavens and now he's grounded it, it does it goes back to when jesus says you know and i saw satan you know uh, like lightning. It is, it's like he was kicked out of heaven. Uh, of course, we know uh, by reading the book of Job that he does go before the uh, before God and, and and to accuse us, you know, uh, of everything. Um, mm -hmm. We we have uh, to to read and like you said, you know, like Revelation twelve, and, and and we need to read Daniel because they go hand in hand, and it tells you, it gives mm -hmm. you so much information. Um, and then, the, you know, it, it talks about the deliver right here. This just one verse. It tells you that in the end times, the God is going to deliver his people and Michael is going to be there. And those who are written in the book of life, that's another mm -hmm. uh, thing that Christians misunderstand. Everyone is written in the book of life until they are written out because they do not obey God. So mm -hmm. they will be there. And all the Jews that are now Jews that will become saints are going to have their names written in the book of life. And when you say you're talking mm -hmm. about people that don't obey God, you're talking about those who are lost. You're not talking the, about uh, Christians mm -hmm. who they didn't, they failed to obey. So now they lost their salvation. There's a big difference. Okay. Mm -hmm. want to uh, clarify yeah, that. Unsafe because, people, unsafe yeah, people. You're talking about every yeah. human being to ever exist will mm -hmm. be written in the book of life. They are there. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah, and they only get removed if they reject the gospel or die without Christ. That's right. when they yeah. are removed. Anybody else that uh, is saved, they're solidified. And Revelation three ten says he will not blot out our names mm -hmm. out of the book of life. So we just want to clarify that when when Lewis is talking about you know those yeah. who don't obey, because you know you're gonna have people say, oh well, you're talking about works here, you know. So yeah. No, yeah. yeah. All right. So Sammy. All right. So the angel of the Lord. There's a few debates here. Some say the angel of the Lord is a pre-incarnate Jesus Christ. 
while others say no, this is a special angel that is a, a personal attendant to Jesus Christ. That's why he's called the angel of the Lord, right? Now, mm-hmm. let me see if I could read it here. Okay, here we go. In Psalm 34, verse 7, it says this. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. So this angel of the Lord is active in every believer's life, don't you think? Yeah. um, The angel of the Lord is, again, like Psalm says, encamps around believers and protects us and delivers us. Um, He's still active today. Um, So it, it wouldn't be... Why would Jesus still, be, if it was Jesus, why would it still be called the angel of the Lord? Right, right. Well, they're, they're, they'll say, well, you know, Jesus is an angel. He's a messenger. No, no. He, th- we're talking about uh, servants created uh, mm-hmm. by for purpose. Yeah, then when it says angels, talking about these angelic messengers. I, 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 I'm with you. I believe that the angel of the Lord is a personal uh, angel to the Lord Jesus Christ. Like, it's a... Mm-hmm. It, a high-ranking angel of some sort. We don't know. We don't know if it's a seraphim, a cherubim. We don't know because it doesn't really tell us. It just says angel of the Lord. So this is, he's in a specific class all by himself. Now, you know, uh, Brother Louis, before we go into the fallen angels, in Ephesians 6.12, it says this. And, you know, you and I and every Christian I know ha- has, has dealt with this. It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, mm-hmm. against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is where the real warfare is. And, and a lot of this time when it says we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, obviously we were, we're wrestling against spiritual beings, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And, you, you know, you, you, you go to um, the armor of God and it tells you, but you you put on the helmet of salvation because you are const- Christians are constantly attacked um, by mm-hmm. by this and 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 the word is our only protection uh, and when I say the word I mean Jesus and I mean what is written down uh, by by God so we have a it's the flesh versus the spirit Paul, Paul talks about this um, and and when it says heavenly places. Um, I mean, when it says the rulers of the darkness of this world, it's not talking about the hell. It's talking about this world. It's a, a, mm-hmm. another understanding that they think that Satan is sitting on the throne of God of hell, which hell is um, actually God is in control of hell, uh, mm-hmm. not Satan. So it, it's we know that there's you know spiritual weakness, wickedness. Okay, so this these are people whose job or demons whose job it is to go around and try to get us to turn away from God. Mm-hmm. That's right. And, you know, um, you know, we should just leave the fallen angel section till next week because I, you know, I want, you know, I just wanted to elaborate here on what Lewis is saying here. Um, you know, Sammy, if you've been a Christian for any length of time, you've experienced uh, attacks, fiery darts. Mm-hmm. You yourself uh, have, you know, been attacked with your eternal security. That's not, mm-hmm. that's, that's what they do. They attack us mentally. They try to get us upset. They try to get us to step out in the flesh and so forth and, yeah. and, 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 and try to react in our own power. Um, you've experienced stuff like that, haven't you? I have. Um, I mean, I didn't experience spiritual warfare until I became a Christian. I was like, what's going on? <laughs> so, um, but yeah, they, they try to, I mean, what they try to do is they get your eyes off Jesus. They um, try to scare you. They try to confuse you. They try to panic you, which none of those things are of the Lord. Right. God is a God of peace and understanding. And they want to basic, they want to shipwreck you in the faith, essentially. They want you to become ineffective so that you won't, you're still a Christian because no one can take away your salvation, but you're not an effective Christian. You're not working for the Lord or you're not living for the Lord. Right. He's basically with those attacks. If you succumb to those attacks, uh, he's ha- he has removed you from the board, the board. Yeah. He has taken yeah. you out of the war, taken you out of the game. He has benched you. Uh, you're mm-hmm. still part of the team, but you're just benched. You can't do anything mm-hmm. uh, until you actually, but, you know, and, and, and brother Lewis, you know, 
when people wrestle against with these thoughts of, you know, I could lose my salvation or I could, uh, what if God has forsaken me? What if I've sinned too much? Which, by the way, we've all thought these things at one point. It's, it, 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 it's when we get our eyes off of Jesus for that time being. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it, it, you know, like Lewis always says, man, he's like, you know, when you're sinning, you're not thinking about God. And he's, yeah. he's right. He's right. right? <laughs> so what mm-hmm. do you think? Well, you know, we have a, a, a passage in, in, in the Bible, in the New Testament, where um, they, they were on the other side of the uh, Galilee Sea and, and Jesus told them to go ahead. And, you know, the, apost- the, the disciples went first and um, Jesus stayed behind. Then the big storm came up. And uh, Jesus appeared. They thought he was a ghost, but you know, again, he told them that uh, it, it was him. And and Peter actually stepped out of the boat and walked on water mm-hmm. while his eyes were on, on Jesus. But then the word tells mm-hmm. us that he started to look around. And when he started to look around and, and the problems mm-hmm. in the world he started to sink. Uh, and and Jesus said, you know, you have little faith. Um, mm-hmm. and, and this is the we do. See the problems, okay? Uh, we mm-hmm. and we don't trust Jesus. Uh, it's it's um, it's a him it's human nature. We all do it, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, last night uh, I had to deal with problems with my car, and I was saying, you know, what 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 else can go wrong, you know? And mm-hmm. because I took my eyes off Jesus, and I started thinking about me, because mm-hmm. when you there's another thing when you take your eyes off the Lord, uh, you put Him second, and you put yourself first. Because when you put your problems first, you're putting yourself first. So you, mm-hmm. you take your eyes off the Lord. Uh, things worked out. Uh, thank the Lord. Um, but that's what we do sometimes. We do take our eyes off of him when we sin, okay? Mm-hmm. We're not thinking about him at all. Uh, we're thinking, again, about ourselves. Uh, what mm-hmm. it is that, that I can do for myself. Right. And also, you know, speaking of these, you know, angels and fallen angels and stuff, uh, the 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 demonic angels they want us to fear and then we're mm-hmm. not talking about godly fear we're talking about ungodly fear that it paralyzes mm-hmm. you uh, you mm-hmm. know they'll, they'll give you what if questions that's one yeah. of their favorite you know it's like what 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 satan said to eve yay half god said did, did mm-hmm. god really say that eve you know and then eve starts to doubt <laughs> and then next mm-hmm. you know we're here you know dying yeah. to this day but um when we fear we are calling God a liar. Mm-hmm. You know, when the Bible says be anxious for nothing and we get anxious, mm-hmm. it's because we don't believe God's word. He said not to fear. He's with us. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. And if we fear, we're saying, I know you said that, Lord, but I don't believe you. And that's what that's how we have to think, because that helps us not to do it. Yeah. You know, we, we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. And yeah, okay, like Lewis says, car broke down. That's it, you, you see it. The car is broken mm-hmm. down. That's by sight. But he has faith. Somehow, some way, it's going to get fixed. The Lord will take care of it. That's not his problem. That's not Lewis's problem. Let the Lord deal with it. He can deal with it. And um, a lot of times, these fallen angels want us to fear the Lord mm-hmm. because it gets us out of that. It gets us out of the... Uh, the, uh, the loop with God. And, mm-hmm. and Sammy, again, I have experienced that. You have experienced that. Lewis has this, every single mm-hmm. Christian has experienced that. And the mm-hmm. good news is it means you are saved. If you're getting attacked by the enemy, it's not because you're on his team. <laughs> yeah, by by them saying like, you know, oh, are you, are you really saved? Or, you know, what if this, or what if that there, but when you actually can, you know, stop looking at the lies and then think about it, you're like, why would I, if this, like, if this was the truth, would it bother me? <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> like, no, it bothers me because it's not the truth. Right. And by the way, <laughs> when, you know, we were in the world and we were sinning, it didn't bother us. Nope. It didn't bother us. We didn't say, oh, man, I shouldn't have done that. No, the, we, it, it, what we wanted, what we were really trying to, to avoid was getting caught. <laughs> That's what we were fearful of, getting caught. Okay. Mm-hmm. But now as a Christian, when you sin, and you will sin as a Christian, okay, um, you feel convicted. You feel horrible yeah. for the thing you've done. I don't care how yeah. small or how large the sin is. 
you that conviction goes into your soul and you can't mm-hmm. sleep. You, gotta, you toss and turn until you confess it to the father. Yep. And then guess what? Miraculously, it's calm again because you mm-hmm. have taken it before the father and confessed your faults before him. But okay, mm-hmm. here's the best part of the program, the gospel. Um, Brother Lewis, there are people watching. They're thinking about it. What must they do to be saved? Go for it. Well, you know, all the problems in the world that we have, all the evil uh, down here in South Florida, we know that uh, the floods have, you know, uh, Mother Nature. And they always say the same thing. Why doesn't God do anything? Well, that's because he's already done it. He's done it all. Okay. And one of the things that he has done is because we are sinners and we are falling short of his glory. He has provided a way for us um, to spend eternity with, with him. So God came down in the form of a man, which is Jesus Christ, and took on all our sin. He became sin for us to pay for all those sins that we have committed and will commit. Okay? Yeah. So whatever sin I'm going to commit later on today or tomorrow or the next, th- that, that sin has been paid for. Okay? That, the, the sins of the last person that is going to be born on this planet has already been paid for as long as he puts his face in Jesus. And it doesn't take a lot. It's just humble yourself, understand that you're a sinner, and you need a Savior, and that Savior is Jesus Christ, and you put your faith and you trust in him. Hey Amen. I just got one question. Who's Mother Nature, bro? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, she's a fallen yeah. angel. <laughs> yeah, I, I've never I, I met think... Mother Nature. <laughs> no, no, no. She lives down, down in Homestead. Yeah, okay. Oh, she, is she the wife of Father Time? Uh, yes. No, yes. <laughs> yeah, no, well, yeah, but he's really much older than she is. <laughs> yeah. See, I tell people I don't know. I don't even use the term Mother Nature. I don't know. I never met her, and uh, she's always angry because you know. <laughs> we're yeah. Always yeah. You never. Volcanoes. You know. You never say Mother Nature when it's like a nice sunny day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You never. She only shows up. At, well, she's also cousins with the evil traffic queen that causes rush hour traffic every single day. So, uh, yes. Yeah. Anyway, Sammy, go for it. So what must a person do to be saved? They need to realize that they're sinners and that their sin keeps them from God. We have to be perfect to get to heaven and we are not. Christ came. He died, was buried and rose. And all you have to do is believe that he did it for you. Amen. Amen. It's so simple, but so profound and powerful. I mean, the gospel is so easy to believe. It makes sense. It, you know, um, you have to really hate God, okay, to reject the gospel. You, you have to really hate God, number one, and, and, and love yourself as God in order to reject yeah. the gospel. Uh, and we, our prayer is that everyone that's watching this that's not saved, that you please put your faith in Jesus Christ today. He did all the hard work, the heavy lifting, everything. He lived the perfect life. He followed the law to the letter. Okay, he was always obedient to the Father. He did everything we couldn't do. I, listen, I wouldn't make it five minutes if I had to do all that. I, in my mind, I would sin. In my <laughs> Something would happen where mm-hmm. I would, you know, everybody would be doomed if it was up to me. But Jesus Christ being God, he can do it. And he did it perfectly. And all we have to do is trust in him that he did that for you and me. He did that for us, that you can't save yourself, but you have to believe that he can save you. And he Mm -hmm. did everything that you couldn't do. And Mm -hmm. that's what we want from you guys. All right. So next week, uh, Sister Addie will be with us. Actually, no, next week is our uh, uh, prophecy uh, panel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, on the 21st. So we're not going to, we'll, we'll delve into the fallen angels after that. I think Sammy will be gone for a couple of ep- episodes. She has an, uh, a few engagements she has to go to. Um, but um, yeah, next week, join us because we're going to have our, our, our first prophecy panel with uh, all a lot of the admins on, on, on camera at the same time. And we're going to be answering some questions, you know, some uh, prophecy questions and, you know, real day, real topic kind of questions as well mm-hmm. like the jesus revolution and so forth and so on okay mm-hmm. so we hope that you guys join us uh with for that next week and listen guys until next time look up our redemption draws near maranatha and god bless god bless
God bless.